Hey everyone, Diogo Marquez here. Hey everyone, Diogo Marquez here, your friend in sales. Today I want to share with you a couple of thoughts that have been useful for me when I'm going to go about and doing my cold calling for the day. And I hope this, I really want this to, this message to come across and help you guys out because this is really important. I think sometimes when you get like focused like to your inner self, maybe because of your upbringings, the, the way that you like uh, were brought up, not in a good way, I mean. So it made you like uh, become more self-aware, like uh, more uh, what's happening uh, like with you and not necessarily the situation around you. And this is a weakness. I'm going to share with you exactly what I mean. So this may uh, become clear. What I mean is overachievers, people that accomplish something meaningful in life, usually come from rough neighborhoods, come from rough situations when they were like in their upbringings that made them um, make a point of saying this cannot be true. These people cannot be right. So there's a distancing that you create between yourself and your upbringings. You want to get out of there, right? You want to get out of the ghetto. You want to make a point that these people that told that stuff to you when you were younger, they cannot be right, right? So you become more, you become an entrepreneur essentially. The, that's what entrepreneurs are all about. They are people that have that resiliency to go about and do something. But now here's where, the com where comes the first problem. Sometimes people that have this upbringing, they become too self-centered. And I'm, I'm, flawless. I'm, I'm flawed as well. I, I just want to share this with you because this is something that I've learned and helps me when, I'm, when I have that mind shift. You become too self-aware and too self-centered. And the problem is that you are not aware of your surroundings. And what I mean by this is in twofold. The first one is getting outside yourself. You have to be helpful. It's all about helping people with something. It doesn't matter if you sell them drugs, if you give them statistics, uh, explanations. It's about them, giving them what they want. Forget about the ethics for now. I just want for you to be aware of it's something outside of you. So you need to give people something, okay? So you have a coffee shop or you want to open like 1,000, 1 million stores. That, that's fine, but it's all about them, not you. So you need to bring this mindset every time that you are going to uh, go about and get in contact with the marketplace when you are doing your day-to-day -day activities. And some examples of this are, it's good sometimes when you compare these with different industries. So maybe you can see where the flow, where the flow is in what you're doing. I'll give you an, another example. Let's say you are doing some cold calling, which is pretty much what this channel is all about. It's, it's about sales and finance. So. If you're calling someone, you are going to the existing marketplace, right? And you are communicating with someone that doesn't know about you, right? And you are showing him or her about your products and services for them. But what usually is an impediment and makes you stressed and start you getting like in front of yourself, like impeding you from doing what you should be doing is that you are placing a way too higher burden on yourself to become perfect. And if you would compare, and this is what I mean by going to the marketplace in this first sentence, instance, if you went to the marketplace and saw what most people are doing, they're pretty much not doing anything. So you are overcomplicating things and like striving for perfect you in the moment. And this is an attainable. This is an, an, an impossibility. You cannot uh, go from zero to 100 uh, like immediately. It just doesn't happen. You go from zero to one, then one to two, and so on. So if you're striving to get to like the top of the, of the skyscraper, it just doesn't happen like this. It, it, you can get there, and you will, but it takes one step at a time, see? And if you go about and compare it with the benchmark, meaning what most people are doing, they're not doing anything. So why are you overcomplicating things that essentially is keeping you still? keeping you from moving forward. So you're just having a conversation with someone, which brings me to these three main conclusions that you have to 
tell yourself constantly, this is something that I do every day because I struggle with this. I want to get the thing done, right? You want, I want to get the thing solved. I want to get to the skyscraper. I want the money right now, right? It just doesn't work like that. So you will place yourself in a situation that's way too much pain and way too much burden for you to carry. When essentially, when you compare with most people what they're doing, they're not doing anything. So if you w make one phone call, that's pretty much better than most people. If you make 10 phone calls, like if you make 20 phone calls, see? But if you tell yourself to make 500 phone calls, that's a problem, right? So one at a time. This is one I want to, I urge you to think, to think at things like, like um, this, in this approach, because it's essentially about removing uh, breaks, removing barriers from you doing the right thing, which is you're just calling another human being and telling him or her about your products and services. What's wrong with that, right? But if you're placing way too much pressure on closing the first person on the spot because you want to get to the skyscraper like in one, sp in one second, it just doesn't happen like that. So you need to have this kind of calmness and stillness in your being at that moment and understanding that you're not perfect, that person is no better than you, no worse than you, not, not even equal. You just don't know about that person, right? But you're gonna treat that person with respect and keep your self-respect when you're calling that person, right? You won't allow the, anyone to go through you. You won't allow anyone to talk ill uh, back at you because you'll res you respond immediately and accordingly, putting them or her in their places, right? No one's above you. So you need to talk with people with respect but in still respect in the way that they respond, right? Because you won't allow anything otherwise different. So, so the three main conclusions that I want for you to tell yourself every single time that you're making a phone call is that the first one is, I want to help. I can help. And that it's not real. So let's get, let's get to this. I want to help, which means you are talking with someone and coming from a place that you want to help them. You really want to help them, right? Even if ethically what you're selling, probably it's not like, but I won't be the judge or jury of that. If you're selling, if you're selling alcohol, if you're selling like, uh, like sugar products, I, I could care less. It's all about what people want. So if that's what you're selling, if that's what you have, I wouldn't buy that. But if it's something that people would buy, just have to find them. And I know about this just have to because it takes a bunch of work, but, and it's understa clearly an understatement, but whatever it is that you are providing to people, it's all about them. So I want to help, right? You're an economist, you're a, a computer science major, you're like a, a statistics major, so you wanna help, right? You know something about that specific subject, right? So think about this every single time that you're going to ab go about and making a phone call. I want to help. Just tell yourself this. I, I, I keep telling myself these three sentences and I find myself like I get calmer. I, I feel better. And, uh, and people will feel you differently when you feel better about yourself, when you are calling. No, no uh, tension there. So I want to help. This is the first one. The second one is I can help. And notice the difference. When you say, I can help, it's because you know something, right? You actually know how to do it, right? You studied insurance for a very long time. You know the products, right? You know the maturities, you know the types of products, you know the riders, you know all the stuff and the variations. I can help. I know the market. I know what you're going through. I know how to submit this process to the insurance company. Just not telling them this immediately. Just in one line, in, w in your brain, you're just telling, I can help. Because you really can help. Right? So, I want to help, it comes like uh, a, a wish that you have, I want to help, right? Coming from a good place, I want to help. Right? The second one is more specific and lazy guys are focused. Like, I can help. Right? And the third and last one, and this is something about the, the perception that you have from people because you are creating in your mind, not that person, but just in your mind, a perfect figure of authority that is completely unsurpassed. And that is just not real. It doesn't exist. Because, and, and I will share this with you because usually, now we have the COVID thing, most, most times my little kid is at home. But um, before this, I, I went like, because um, I went to, to, um, to get my, my toddler to school. 
and I went through a lot of people, and I saw them like on the streets and all that, and I saw a bunch of them, clearly they were feeling overwhelmed. And uh, for some reason, I don't, I, could, I don't know why, but maybe it's b because of comparison, I just thought to myself, why am I overcomplicating things, right? All, look at that guy, huh? he's struggling. And then you like get calmer. I, I don't know what that is, I, I couldn't get, explain why that is. I just know that when you step out of your head and actually see someone, it doesn't matter if they're poor, if they're rich, I've been in meetings with people that were very, 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 very wealthy, and they got the same feeling. So it doesn't matter if they're poor or getting overwhelmed or very super wealthy. It's like you get all that uh, nebular stuff and then narrow it down to someone that is in front of you. It's like he's a PhD doctor, but now you are having a conversation with that person, right? So uh, you are taking all that over complication and achievement and all that coming down to just one person. Can Now, let me ask you, can you have a conversation with that person? You can, right? And probably you will learn more than just speaking with the average Joe, right? Because that person is more attuned with something that they really enjoy doing. That's why they committed all that time into it, accomplishing that. So they understand that, right? So when you take the overcomplication of that thing from your life, it becomes simpler. So what I tell myself is every time that I'm feeling anxious, because I know this is coming from a place that you like, your brain is telling you that it's an overachiever, a figure of authority, and it does not connect. But it's, it's, not, it's just not true. They are struggling with different things. I've spoken with billionaires, I've spoken with PhDs, I've spoken with super high athletes. They're just, they're just people. They're people. They accomplish something meaningful in their lives, but they're struggling with stuff, right? And when we started having conversations and meaningful conversations, from their perspectives, because they were super successful at something, they could see the weaknesses in me, right? And that's great, because you'll know where you're failing, so you can do something about it. Notice that people that uh, pretty much are failures, but in a, in a bad sense of the way, right? They know everything, right? If they know everything, then they don't have any questions. And if they don't have any questions, it's because they don't, uh, they don't pretty much uh, put themselves at odds because they know they must be right. That comes out of insecurity, right? I don't know anything, right? I'm more preoccupied with the things with two things essentially, with the things that I don't know and the things that I think I know and might not be true. This is why I, I keep having conversations and I try to have conversations with people that are more successful to try to understand their reasoning because their reasoning is not coming out of trying to please you. They'll tell you straight up exactly what's wrong. And I'll give you an example. There's this good friend of mine now, this uh, created Shark Tank here in Portugal. He brought the show to, to Portugal. We had conversations. I went, uh, one, once I went there and just told him, listen, I want any new money. I, I just want to understand exactly what's going wrong because I, I act, I'm actually trying and I'm, I'm failing. So please, please, under, please tell me exactly what I'm doing wrong because I, I don't get it and I'm really trying. So it, it took the time. He looked at me like seriously. He was like, this is an entrepreneur, right? Like he was like when he was younger. So he understands the struggles. So he took the time to sit with me and he told me, he told me exactly what the problem was, right? So now you have this enormous advantage because you know where the problem is. It's just a matter of you dealing with that or not, right? And I had this blessing like um, throughout my, my life until this point where I am right now and I keep striving to get even more of these because you are dealing with people that know more and this is something incredible. You are dealing with people, they actually know what they're talking about. My mentor is a million dollar round table member for the last 14 years, he's like a lifetime member now. And he told me stuff that he clearly disagrees with me, right? And that's great because you are doing s things in a way and then you get someone that is at where you strive to be and he's telling you this doesn't work, right? That's great, right? 
So I just wanted to share this uh, sidetrack with you. I'm rambling a bit, but this is about rambling, I guess. It's just about the journey and helping you guys figure things out because I know this thing is, is not easy. And every bit of your advice that you get along the way, it's, it's helpful. So because you don't learn about this stuff in school. It's, it's uh, picking stuff here and there. So I try to get this condensated here. So maybe it can help you if you come across my channel. My channel. So what I wanted for you to realize is that when you're calling someone, right? Let's say it's someone that has a company that is worth five billion, right? He has a cell phone number there through LinkedIn. Just call him. I want to help. I can help. Right? And it's not real. So just tell yourself these three things. I hope this really help is helpful for you because it's helpful for me. I tell myself this every single day. And keep doing this because you are essentially making a decision on yourself and your life and exactly what you want to achieve. It will take time, it will take effort, and it, will, it will take energy, and it will take an immense amount of dedication. But if this is something that you need and you understand from your reasoning that th this is the, has the highest probability of getting you when you want to be in life, just do it. For myself, and I'm 41 now, I made two decisions essentially. I want to become a PhD in economics and I want to, and I want to have in one year time two million in life insurance premiums. That would equate to half of that because that's what I get in commissions. So when I divide that by 52 weeks, it will essentially come, up, come about 20 meetings uh, a week. And it's four meetings a day. And it's roughly around 75, 70, 50 to 70,000 in premiums per person. And when you think about it, 50 to uh, 70,000 premiums per person, essentially, and, and obviously in the, the um, reality here in Portugal, we are talking about technology companies, a mom and pop shop, so let's say like it's husband and wife, like two or three partners. And from them, life insurance and crit critical illness or income protection, it's about four to 5,000. And then you have the employees, right? They would pay 100 to 200 bucks a month, right? for 15 to 20 employees, something like that. So when you get to this uh, math, you essentially narrow down the type of people that you're talking to. So it's technology companies up to 50 people, if more, even better, up to 50 people and having a cell phone number there. So when you are going to go, let's say you found a couple of contacts like that, right? On LinkedIn. So the first thing you tell yourself is, I want to help. The second one is, I can help. You've been studying, right? And you've done this before. And the third one is, it's not real. And then you pick up the phone. I hope this was helpful for you. Remember to subscribe. Click below to, give, to provide some comments if you have any questions. And I'll be more than happy to jump on board and help you guys out. Peace.